Okay, if everybody's here, should we take roll and rock and roll? All right. <coughs> Calling me to order Joe Becker. Present. Andy Bertram, here. Dan Peter, here. Jack Ergen, here. Lisa Dean, here. Russ Rolla, here. Vince O'Brien, here. Superintendent Collins, here. You guys want me to close that? Or? No, we're good. Okay. We'll be in here shortly. Uh, motion to approve tonight's agenda. Motion. Second. Okay, and um, can we have a motion to approve the minutes of the January 20th meeting? Oh, wait. Uh, <laughs> any discussion on uh, agenda? Sorry. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Agenda approved. Now for the minutes from January. Make motion to approve the minutes. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. And the bill's payable. So moved. Second. Any discussion on that? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. And now we can get to the good news. Really good news, and I don't know if you want to invite in Laura Zabel. <laughs> Come on up front, please. No, I'm a little surprised you didn't work time. Come on up front. Please, come on. Please, come on. Don't be shy. I know, we'll hide behind. Yes, that's okay. <laughs> well, you're part of great news. Yay. And you yeah. know that. National Honor <laughs> Society Star of the North Award. Just share a little bit about it. Laura Zabel, want to lead or Sandy? Well, or, or do you have your own group that's going to lead? We were going to have Graham talk to you about it. Absolutely. Yeah. Go ahead, Graham. So we got this award for the Halloween food drive that we always do, and um, each of us individually have a project that we run, and that was actually my project. And so I coordinated uh, getting groups together for students and the routes they would take and uh, all the stuff that we needed for it. And we ended up getting 1,200 pounds of food. Six thousand. Yeah, yeah. Right around. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Pretty close. Yeah. If you round, it's, it's yeah. Sick face. Yeah. That's, that's the math. Right? So uh, yeah, it was very successful. We actually it was the most people were gotten. So it worked. Yeah. And you know, and we were talking to Hastings Family Service, and they're just so grateful when we come in with these projects, and especially a big project like that, because they really rely on some of those. And they told us we were the second largest group that, um, in over the course of the year, that they have. Um, the mail carriers yep. are the one that bring in a little, a little bit more food. That you get, yeah. But uh, yeah, so it's a really fun project to do, and, and really neat to see how many people it benefits. So. They've been great too to partner with us that they open up early and they get extra staff in so we can bring the first time we brought our 17 vehicles of food down it, it, there was tears for lots of different reasons joy and where are we going to put all this food and it was yeah it was a lot of fun but our organization has done a lot all, all these kids are involved with different projects that they coordinate so these are four of our five officers and can you guys just tell yeah. what else we do throughout the year besides the food drive and tell us who you are yes and you two teachers tell us who you are because you're on tv oh. Okay, hey, we're on TV. Well, I'm Lucas Flegel, and with Logan Welshons over here, we run the bake sale, which is, I kind of think of it as our selfish project. We <laughs> sell baked goods at all the conferences for the high school, and that money we then use to do things for, for example, we bring the seniors to the Gillette Hospital, where we do a, a fundraiser for as well, but we have to bust the kids there, so we need money to do that and other kind of expenditures that kind of accumulate from that sort of thing banquet and banquet bank. for inauguration of, of the NHS members so we're totally self-funded and so these two guys they put on an awesome bake sale yes, that's coming you, up again in yeah, a week so next week treats you guys come up to the high school you can get yourself some treats hey 
Um, I'm Erin Hendricks, and I did the Red Cross blood drive this year, so we raised, or we collected 100 pints of blood. <laughs> <laughs> What's the appropriate verb on that, right? We took, yes. Which was great, and the Red Cross were one of their biggest blood drives in the, in the city as well, so they really appreciate it. And actually, um, our coordinator, Lindsay, is going to, from the Red Cross, is going to be our speaker at uh, induction this year. So each year we have a different person that's part of the groups that we work with come. And our last project that we're going to do um, is yeah the Gillette uh, Children's Hospital Walkathon, which is in early May. So if anybody comes to your door knocking for donations, please consider mm -hmm. donating for that. But um, last year we raised just over twenty thousand wow. dollars for Gillette, um, which uh, was phenomenal. We bring the check up to Gillette. We collect toys for their um, their ward there that they can give out to kids, and uh, we always have a great speaker, a, a student there who will talk to us about. Um, he was amazing, the one that we've had the last yeah. couple of years, about how Gillette has impacted him. Uh, lots of kids who decide on careers after they tour the facilities. It's amazing. So it's They take us into the department where they make prosthetics, and we go yeah. into a gate lab where we see all their computer technology, so they're tracking how people walk and, and what uh, surgeries might be required to counteract you know, a disability that they have. So It's it kind of cool to see what the money we raise actually does instead of just handing them a check and... Watching it disappear, yeah. kind of. And Graham, what's your last name? Uh, my name is Graham Johnson, and like I said, I run the Halloween food drive. Yeah. So, so all seniors that will be graduating this yeah. year. Yep, yeah, we have 90 members this year in our group, and we just had our application process is starting. We have 92 applicants for next year, so it's alive and well. Well, thank you so much, and we appreciate your leadership uh, oh. because we know that we can't do it without you. But also, we're about academics, but we're also about giving back to others and. And you're definitely great examples for that for Hastings. So thank you very much. Excellent. Thanks for having me. Yes, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, I can't bring it up to you. I mean, this you tell me first. Okay. Perfect. Excellent. It's good to see you, Cindy. Okay. You know, we should compile some kind of list because there's so many groups in the district that do give back to the community, all the way from K through four and pre-K maybe, all the way through high school. There's, it would be good sometime to recognize all of them on some kind of a... Not just organizations, just little, you know, one-off yeah. uh, penny drives and things that they do, you know, that individual teachers are doing with their classrooms. It's, yeah. it, I, it would be quite a list. Yeah, yeah. Come on in, Suzanne. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Good. Good to see you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for asking. Congratulations. All right, we had some snow this year. We did have some we had snow. Eventually. All at the right time, we had some snow. <laughs> Um, I'm Suzanne Liebeck. I coach um, with Jim Piney at the Alpine Ski Team. We also brought some of our parents which make all of this possible. So thanks for inviting us, and this is Coach Jim Piney. I appreciate uh, you guys uh, letting us come to this. Um, we're missing one racer. Yeah. I don't know what he had going on. We're missing Jake Gartsky, who actually qualified as individual, as well as the team. Stephen O'Connor, uh, senior. Jake Gartsky is also a senior, uh, both qualified as individual. Jacob Piney, 10th grade, who also qualified as individual. And then the team, we got Sam McKinney, also a senior we're going to lose. Uh, next is Hayden Bieber, 10th uh, grader. Uh, we have Ellie Piney, who made it as an individual for our girls, our old lone individual. She ended up 23rd, um, honorable mention at state. We have 10th grader Jack Kateria, who's on the team. And we have our unofficial official JV captain, Logan Welsh. Hmm, <laughs> <laughs> looks familiar. <laughs> <laughs> he does everything. He's the brains of the operation. <laughs> <laughs> He's our main cheerleader. Yeah. He gets the teams going. We've, uh, we won uh, quite a, actually, the boys won all of their uh, races, their conference meets. They won sections. sections. They won the Kelly Hines Memorial and the Jack Czar Memorial Race. Actually, the only second place you got was up at Giants Ridge at the uh, MLK um, Invitational, which was about 16 below zero. It was awful cold, but they ended up second to the state winner. Event. So they did really well at that race. Um, girls ended up second. 
by 16 points in the conference. So they did well uh, as well. And we're losing three girls this year, three seniors. Ellie's a senior, um, Hannah Kateria, and then Sarah Jelps. So we're going to be in a little bit of rebuilding next year, but. And how do you how do you recruit for this quarter? I mean, because it's a very different number one, um, the elements. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's a little different. However, we're we're very lucky in the aspect that with the two ski areas on each end of town, they have what they call a, a D team or development team, and kids can start in that at like six years old. So everyone on the team, with the exception of our foreign exchange student, was either uh, involved with USSA or one of the D teams. So we're really lucky in that. Okay. We have, most of our kids have race experience. I guess the only one that didn't this year, um, besides our foreign exchange student, is Abigail, who was a junior who never ski raced, came out for the team and raced with us. So yeah, we'll take anybody who wants to come out and put up with the elements. Um, it was, was kind of cold this year. It was definitely yeah. kind of cold and a little late start, but uh, we did. We came over all that, so. And your parents have to be great fans as well. We, we have probably the best, well, we have the best parents because to, to run a race, um, we don't have officials. It's not like basketball, you get a couple of officials there. We have to do the officiating ourselves, plus set the course. You know, we don't get to go walk on a court, we have to set it. So we have a lot of parents that help do that, help officially gate judge, um, write the times down. So yeah, without the parents, this would be all the tough, very tough. And for the parents to pay for all the expensive equipment that these guys are on would be pretty tough. Yeah, that was well. going to be my two elements of difficulty for recording. <laughs> <laughs> Cost, the, uh, yes. the weather. weather. Um, yeah. So, yeah. And I'm sure they help recruit other kids into it as well. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. We've been, uh, we had 35 kids this year, oh, which awesome. has been really good. good. And I, we're losing eight, <coughs> but I know mm. there's at least four new girls coming on that showed interest, and hopefully we can find few more to replace the eight we lose. But we'll come back so. next year and tell you about it. Absolutely. Right. All right. <laughs> Absolutely. And for the seniors, um, do you know what you're doing next year, your thoughts, or maybe you don't know, and that's fine. I didn't know where I was going until, or what I was doing until about May 30th, so um, no idea yet? Okay, that's fine. Uh, I think I'm going to be going to UMD. Okay. And then I'll be able to ski there more at Spirit Mountain. Okay. So, yeah. mm -hmm. Not sure. <laughs> okay, that's fine. And I am either the U of M or Madison for chemical engineering. Okay, cool. And that the Jake Gardski is going to St. Cloud. St. Cloud mechanical engineering. Yeah, I think is what he's planning. Well, well thank you so much for representing. I mean, what a year! Very yeah, tough was to good replicate year. that outstanding year. Um, and again, thanks <laughs> to the parents who are there with you every step of the way. And, to continue to have two coaches who are willing to uh, do it for not only the love of the sport but the love of um, some young student athletes too. We really appreciate that. Thank you. So thank you very much. Thank you guys. Thank you. And deep. And deep. Yeah, I'm going to skip uh, superintendent's report or underneath the superintendent's report. More good news. Uh, I think most people know Andy, but some of our new board members might know not know Andy's our tech integration. And as part of Vision 2025, we said we need to communicate more. And this is part of it, um, presenting, hey, what's going on? Well, if I, if I walk out of here and you don't have questions for me to follow up with later, I haven't done my job. Um, I've got a sheet with my latest blog post on the back and a QR code that'll take you to a whole load of links. Uh, that I call our digital footprint, something that we're building every single day in the elementary schools, so that when you Google Hastings Elementary, or you Google one of our uh, schools or one of our teachers, we are crafting what shows up rather than letting someone else do that. So I'm going to kick things off, first of all, by saying we don't have a project this year, sadly. <laughs> I enjoyed that last year. That was really fun. But, but, uh, but uh, just to recap last year, um, this is what I, I felt were our accomplishments last year. Learn pads out now. Uh, I think that's a very, very good thing. Learn pads are better than ever. Our, our, our teacher websites are more attractive, more modern, more user friendly than ever before. Our teachers have a much greater uh, presence on social media with Twitter and Instagram, all with the appropriate um, uh, 
privacy controls for our families to stay in touch. There's even more professional development being broadcast by myself and some of my uh, kind of tech leading teachers. And uh, well, vocabulary just expired. We're working on, on reestablishing that. That was a huge, huge hit. And um, and our distance learning, uh, I'll talk about in just a little bit. We've got a really cool event coming up on March 2nd. Um, last year, some of my challenges, same challenges this year, except our devices aren't so much a challenge. Our connectivity is getting better. And um, at least when it comes to professional development time, we're establishing a, a culture where folks uh, have an expectation on who they can go see and what questions to ask and, and what they can get from me. We're not where I want to be, but we're getting closer and, and, and in a much more comfortable way. I think part of that's too is I'm not that new guy anymore. Well, not quite as new. Uh, the only thing I'm gonna mention on here uh, is this was my goal for last year and then I'm just going to talk about Hastings as a tech leader here in just a little bit. Um, but this is what I want to lead with, uh, just an observation I had made over the last little bit. You know, when we talk about literacy, we talk about reading and writing, right? You can't have one without the other. So you absolutely have to have reading, which is the consuming of information, right? We have writing, which is the creating of information. And you can't be literate without both. You have to have both. And the same thing goes with tech. So, oh, this sharing business. We'll get into authentic audiences here in a minute. But if it's just the teacher, you know the best. It's just going to be good enough. So here's the deal with tech. You still have to consume. You still have to create. And you need to share. But our consuming looks like uh, watching videos, listening to audio, uh, IXL and Moby Max, uh, those are our digital consumables now. You know, those consumable books of worksheets that we've done for years, they kind of still exist, but that kind of is taking the place. We still are consuming, but my focus this year has been on, on getting our students and our teachers, because I want our teachers to lead the way, in creating digital learning artifacts that demonstrate content mastery or understanding. Because when you become the teacher, when you are showcasing what you know, you now have a much deeper understanding of what you are supposed to be learning, and it's shareable. And what I love about the whole shareable bit is that when you share to an authentic audience, it doesn't just have to be the teacher. Because I said just a minute ago, you know, if it's just the teacher, it's going to be good enough. But if it's for mom and dad, grandma and grandpa, peers, the world, they want it to be awesome. So sharing beyond just the classroom immediately takes it up a level because you know you want ownership over this. This is me, it's got my name on it, and our students are getting there. So, uh, reflection so far on this year, iPad came to the elementary, so I'm really proud of it. Teachers had one last year, we continue this year. Uh, it's an instructional tool, using a lot, a lot for email, uh, but we're mirroring with doc cams, which is freeing up our teachers from the tethers of the board. They're able to move around the classroom, interact. Put an iPad on the student desk, let the student drive and lead instruction for a little while. Uh, we're documenting with photo and video almost every day in almost every classroom, which is brilliant because then you can easily share that with families and keep them in the loop. What's going on today? I don't know. Let's check the email, see what's going on. We're creating really powerful, uh, almost professional looking video with the replay app. And uh, Seesaw here, again, I'll talk about here in a minute, is a really promising communications tool that is uh, student driven instead of teacher driven. I love that. Uh, classrooms now have iPads and again I am really focusing on the creation of digital learning artifacts. So if you look up here uh, we had a lot to do with coding in December and it continues to, to live on our iPads and students are using it every day. They are coding lines after lines of, te of, uh, of text and code in black format. They're building with pic collage documenting. They're creating on here, when you, when you take a look, this Chatter Kids app, we've had third graders who have given presidential research projects as the president making that president speak and narrate their life. It's amazing. And they love it. It's fun for them, so it takes it to the next level. Um, we have Creative Carts, which offer that one-to-one -one opportunity. Uh, they are very popular. It's tough to lock one of those down unless you're planning weeks, weeks in advance. Um, they're built for creation, but um, the blog post that I had shared with you on the back of that paper actually is geared because a, a lot of times our creative cards aren't being used for creation as much as they're being used for consumption. 
And I don't mind that so long as we have a nice balance because you have to have both. Um, we, have, we have ironed out quite a few kinks managing the mass numbers of iPads that we have now. Uh, Larry and I have, uh, have, uh, have learned a lot. We're in a better place now. I'm really, really excited about this update that's coming in March because uh, an update from Apple that transforms how students use an iPad from a device that just anybody can share to a device that becomes theirs when they log in. It's their information, it's their progress. And then when they log out and another child logs in, it is now theirs with their information and their progress. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try it out with a few beta classes so that come fall, we know what to expect and we can set that out for the rest of the year. So for me, relationships have always been what's most important and um, the connections that we have made, not just with, within Hastings and within our schools, but with the world have been phenomenal. We have teachers using Twitter a lot more than they have been to connect here, there, around the world. Um, and I'm going to talk about beholding the power of this because right now, um, the best Twitter test we have ever had at the elementary level is underway and is blowing my mind and I can't wait to share it with you here in just a second. Um, when it comes to, uh, by the way, I get really excited and I go on tangents. <laughs> and I get, I, I'll reel you back in. Don't yeah, worry about reel me in yeah. and I, like I said, if I don't leave you with questions to get a hold of me with, then I have, uh, I have failed. So um, my, my, my goal this year, my, my theme for the year was share your story for the teachers because I wanted us to celebrate all the great that happens every single day. And so our teachers are doing that and they're acknowledging the great work of students, we're acknowledging the great work of one another, and we're doing it in a very public way which helps build our digital footprint so that when you do Google Hastings Public Schools or when you do Google the name of a school, we control what comes up, not whomever which is a very, very important thing. When it comes to, um, when it comes to apps, uh, I always think of, you know, is this transformative? Are we able to do something with this technology that was never, ever before possible until this device? And that's something that I always kind of try to filter things through. And so that falls into our creating and those digital learning artifacts. Can we do something that was never before possible? Can we make a president speak? Can we turn ourselves into an avatar and place ourselves on the surface of the moon to talk about the lunar landings. Yeah, we can now. We never could do that before. How awesome is that? How engaging and empowering is that? And all of these digital learning artifacts are so easy to share for free immediately with family anywhere on the planet. And that's a, a just, it, oh, I'm so excited about that. Um, so we're spreading the word and we're sharing as much as we can with everyone that we can because that's the way we can connect and create a, a web of support not only within our own district within our own schools but around the world um, and those authentic audiences moving beyond just this paper is going to the teacher and then it's coming back to me is going into a recycle bin we're creating digital learning effects that can live on that can be referred back to year in year out this is that legacy of learning that our students are creating and like I said before, it also increases their effort because they know, hey, this is, this is big time. I'm excited about this. I'm going to take it to the next level. So Seesaw uh, is probably our biggest success this year. And it started last uh, May. And I sat down with Amanda Mall, kindergarten teacher at Kennedy, and Andy Larson, third grade teacher from Pinecrest. And we sat down. We began thinking about our reboot camp which is at the end of August every year. Just kind of a way to kick off the year and brush up on tech stuff. And I said, guys, check out Seesaw app. Brand spanking new, really cool student-driven sharing with families. Check it out. And that's where I left it. And those two over the course of the summer played with it with their own kids, discovered, wow, this is really powerful. They shared it with a couple colleagues who were like, wow, this is incredibly powerful. It's free and it's a communication tool within our classroom, with our families, with the teacher. It has taken off to the point where easily a third of each school is using this free resource to communicate. And um, all completely with very little help from me. Just kind of like, hey, here you go. Um, and I love that. But one of my favorite, favorite uh, stories about Seesaw comes from third grade at Pinecrest, Tracy Runsway's class. They made, um, Egyptian toothpaste, which is a disgusting combination of salt and baking soda and 
they made it before winter break. And uh, Tracy said, hey, when you go home, record a <laughs> reaction video of yourself and put it on Seesaw so I can see it. So over, over winter break, she's getting these, ref these reaction videos, which are hilarious. These kids brushing their teeth with this homemade concoction of blah. And uh, so they got back, and they would play, and they would talk about it, and they would describe what was that like. Can you believe that that's what it was? It was such an authentic learning experience, and they got to have fun and laugh with one another because they shared this experience from their homes with each other at school. Super authentic and awesome. Absolutely loved it. So anyway, this is, this is getting bigger and bigger. It's going to be um, brought up, uh, this, not this Friday, the week, the Friday after, uh, as an option for teachers to come learn more. Um, and and I'm, getting, I'm getting asked every week about Seesaw and helping new teachers get on board free. free. There is a paid element to it. I'm ignoring that for now because it's free. <laughs> so, um, so this is what I was talking about earlier, behold the power of something. Deanna, do you have the mouse to, would you mind? I suppose I can come back over here and try to. So this is a 10, I'll oh, hit this one right here. This is a 10 second time lapse of Mrs. Davidson's second graders. And they are scanning QR codes and they are asking or answering questions that the rest of the class set up. And then here at the end, we came up with this brilliant idea. 10 seconds, all it was. But they were scanning and answering each other's questions. And we all did that, like, put on your, uh, Answer, ask a survey question of your class. Get out your, you know, your spiral notebook. What's your favorite color? Blue. You know, walk around, and ask everybody. We took that to the next level by using Google Forms, and then turning into a QR code that the kids scanned, answered the question, and then, if you can, tap this re, uh, tap this replay button. And I want to, wa I want you to watch the form change live on the screen. It's it's updating live. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, you probably can't. The, the data was moving as kids chimed in with their answers. So we had 20, no, 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 we had 17 authentic experiences simultaneously that that class can now use to discuss and dissect that data from themselves. But at the end, when we gathered there at the front, I said, you know what we can do that we've never been able to do before? We can survey the world. You game? So they came up with, what's your favorite sport? Pretty globally accepted, right? So they came up with a list of like 12 different sports that they wanted to ask the world, what's your favorite sport? I said, all right, here's the deal. You come up with the questions, I'll get your answers. Put it on Twitter, tag a couple, few people who I knew could spread the word, and let's see if I can show you this. Is that classroom right there, Karen Davidson's classroom? It is. All right. It is. So um, I'll let her know that I saw her picking her nose at rapid speed. <laughs> <laughs> so check this out. This is this is this isn't even current. This is earlier. This is the live feed data of responses. But here's where we're getting responses from. I know you can't see that, which is why I made a fun infographic with a map. Check this out. We can add South Dakota to this list. We can add Kansas to this list. And there's something else up in the East Coast. We have responses from all of the blue states. We have responses from the green provinces. And we have responses from four countries, Canada, the United States, the UK, and Australia. In fact, most of our, uh, our uh, responses came from Australia because a class discovered it in Australia. And then their class contributed mm -hmm. their favorite. So cricket and rugby went through the road. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we just took this little class project and in two minutes to put the thing together and just put it out there and just let it go, this happened and now they have this authentic real world audience. I just, I don't know about you, I can see this little, there's some happy eyes I see out there, but it, we're revisiting this on Friday. We're giving it Monday to Friday. I'm going back in on Friday with this class to talk about it. And what time I, will they you, don't know. What time will you be there? Uh, haven't decided. I have to reach okay. out. Last time I was there was at uh, 9.40 or 9, somewhere around there. All right. Mid-morning. All right. I don't know if my, uh, there we go. So moving forward, here's, here's, here's what's going on. Um, starting actually tomorrow, I'm going to do a, a, I'm doing a Google Apps for Education. That's our Hastings Apps takeover in the labs for the second, third, and fourth grade. Um, we're going to practice logging in. We're going to be creating some slides and docs, sharing it with teachers and friends. Um, that's taking over until spring break. I'm going to be in a lab takeover, which I'm really excited about to get our kids doing that. Um, but this right here, this exploded today. Um, 
Read Across America is on Dr. Seuss's birthday, it's March 2nd, and we are going to be hosting an all-day celebration of literacy. And I call it Literally for Literacy because we have remote readers from across America who are going to be remotely reading to our students along with Hastings students and Hastings staff. Every 20 minutes, a new Dr. Seuss book. A live feed, you jump in when you can, you experience the book, and I might interject some fun activities in there too. I'll share the link with you, I promise. But it just, it, it really just kind of solidified today. I'm super pumped about it. All right, um, coming up on the 4th, we hope, I haven't confirmed this yet, so maybe you guys can help me confirm this. Um, the 10 elementary teachers that we took to the TIES conference this year brought back some wonderful information, and now that we're back from break and we've settled, and conferences are complete, we're ready to present, and the, the group decided that Seesaw, Padlet, Instagram, and Twitter, and flexible learning spaces are what they want to make available to talk and discuss and explore with their colleagues. Again, this is a teacher-driven thing. I'm kind of guiding it, but it's, it's them, and I like that. And I think, uh, Mr. Collins, I mentioned this to you, you know, part of how I look at my job is, is kind of work myself out of this job, so I'm enabling other folks so that it doesn't always have to be me. And this is one way that we're doing that. We don't want him to. Yeah, he yeah. shared that. No, yeah. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to go anywhere, I but I also want to make listen. sure it's not just me, because if it's just me, it's going to get old. Um, so we are very much starting to be recognized locally and um, around, uh, around our country. Uh, so anything that I do, I always, of course, brand with our logo, and I make sure I hashtag with ISD200. Um, anytime we're working with an app, I mention that company in a tweet. And more often than not, within the hour, they tweet back and they can't wait to see what we're doing. And then they retweet it to their thousands of fans, so we're continuing to grow this digital presence. Like, hey, check out what Hastings is doing. This is pretty incredible. All positive stuff. My goal is, hopefully in the near future, to host some sort of regional ed tech something. I don't know what it is. This is just this, this feeling I have. I want to do this. I want folks coming to us instead of us going out. And we definitely have the ability to do it. So um, while this plays, really, I know I'm going over. I'm glad that you're patient. Uh, while this plays, what I want you to see here, this is uh, the live Twitter feed for the hashtag ISD200. Okay, this is stuff that we have contributed to um, the universe, basically. We have art projects from JFK. We we're featured on CARE 11. This was Digital Learning Day. Uh, where we did a live event and we had teachers tweeting out a nice thank you note uh, coming from a teacher um, with what we did for Valentine's Day. But this is going to change because we're going kind of back in time. We're at February 16th and you're going to see these articles that we wanted to share with one another. This is going to morph because about a month ago we had a training and before that training I sent out, I said, hey, if you're just going to take notes on paper, great, go for it. Take notes on Twitter. Use this hashtag, hashtag 200 cares, and we can all see everyone's notes. We can all see everyone's photos and video evidence. <laughs> the, was it the tooth fairy that came by? Anyway, and about 13, 14 teachers took me up on that offer. And, oh, vocabulary retweeted some of the stuff that we had done. But uh, here it is, this is where it begins, and, and I'm, gonna, I'm gonna change this. The awesome thing was, the notes that we were going to take anyway, we still took, but we took them in a very collaborative, communal way with this hashtag. So I'm going to go up here. You'll see it any second now. I'll go up there and I'll, I'll change the hashtag. Here, here it comes. And it was so cool because I was at JFK, but I was seeing what was happening at McAuliffe, and I was seeing what was happening at Pinecrest in all of these different uh, similar but unique experiences. So let's see, here we have uh, Sandy Myshak, uh, Michelle Johnson, Molly Cirillo, Melissa Black, Sarah Canole, Andy Jorgensen, documenting what's going on. And we can go back to this anytime when we need inspiration. How can we take misbehavior and turn it into teachable moments? These ideas, these snapshots, these moments, with that single hashtag, it was such a cool, powerful experience. So anyway. Um, that's just another one of those behold the power moments. Um, and and I, I love to give credit where credit's due, always. Um, so I'm going to give some shout outs really, really fast. 
but I'm going to leave with this. This has sort of been my mantra, and I mention it appropriately when I can. Uh, if, if you find it important, you're going to make time. If not, you're going to find an excuse. And when you think about it, isn't that true? Everybody's busy. There's never going to be enough time. There's always one more thing. But if, you're, if you see it as important, you're going to find a way. If not, you're going to find that excuse. These folks right here, they find a way every single time. If it's an idea, hey, would you try this out? Yes, absolutely. Sometimes we fall on our face. Sometimes we find a seesaw. But these folks in particular, and there are more than this, but these were my front runners who, if I said, would you please, they would say absolutely. And I'm so, so very proud to work with them every single day. So a little shout out to those. Anytime I need someone to jump in and, and give it a go, I know I can count on them. And that list grows every day. So um, my invitation to you, check that out. This is, uh, this is our growing digital footprint. This is just a fraction of what we have done, uh, both as students and as, as teachers, uh, establishing relationships uh, with uh, the International Rhino Foundation. They even got featured in the Hastings Press Gazette. Um, and it's just, I couldn't be happier with what's going on, and I know that we've got so much more to uncover. So I appreciate you giving me more than 10 minutes. Uh, to showcase what's going on. And I'll, I'll get you guys invitations to the um, Read Across America event. Just chime in whenever. It's live, but that same link you can watch on demand anytime. Every 20 minutes, a new book from around the world. Actually, around the US. So, <sighs> If you have questions, I'll take a few now. If you have them, otherwise, you know how to get a hold of me. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pumped. We've, we've, got, we've, we've grown a lot. We've got some more growing to do, but I'm, I'm excited. Vince beat me to tweeting out about a great presentation. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so I just retweeted it. And, uh, yeah. All right, love it. I don't, cool. have a, I don't have a question. I just, you know, appreciation. Um, you are making a difference, and I, I agree with what you say. One person can't keep up that momentum, and you need others, and the others are coming. Yeah. Um, and it's steamrolling in a very good way. So thank yeah. you for your energy. Um, I just feel fortunate to to be here. This was very serendipitous how it all came to be and that's, that's where the best stuff happens so huge impact yeah cool so thank you very much thank you guys very much thank you <laughs>
Uh, next steps in the budget cutting process. I just was going to share with the community what the next steps are, but I don't know really what they are yet. And as board members uh, following this board meeting, we're going to pull together in the work session and talk uh, about what those next steps. So I put it on here as a placeholder just in case um, we knew for sure what those next steps are. Really the next steps are um, for the community uh, who's watching this is for board members and myself to continue to meet with administrators and get our questions answered and get information and, and then for us to decide what our next steps are. Um, I shared with on the facilities re review, I shared with you as board members just a little video, a crash course of what the facilities committee has been looking at. I believe that uh, either at our next board meeting or our next work session might take a little bit more time for board members who sit on the facility committee with me to share some of the things we're thinking because it's almost at a point now where what should our next steps be? What do we think as a board what some of our next steps um, should be, and that's why I gave you that little crash course video on what we've been uh, discussing. And then I just wanted to mention that uh, the long-term facility maintenance revenue, um, I think that because we have to have a 10-year uh, plan that we need to submit and that we need to annually update that and review it, it's been a, a ton of work for Kim, but I'm really happy of where it's going to end up over the next year Kim's been meeting with myself, she's been meeting with Jim Huberti, she's been meeting from, with Paul from CECL. And to have a document that eventually um, Kim and I can show the school board of, we think we'll do this parking lot in this year and, we, and it'll all be there and there'll eventually be pictures that you can upload and, and cost. It's really gonna be a good product for the, the school board to have. Um, and when we got into the software, uh, we thought it was a really great software. Um, Kim would probably tell you that it's been a lot of work. We're a little bit of the guinea pig on the software. <laughs> They've been adjusting it with us, so it's been a ton of work for Kim, but I'm, I'm really happy that, that not only is the long-term facility maintenance revenue a good thing, because we as a school board can do more, but it's really forced us to have a very good 10-year plan, and, and I'm really happy with where that's gonna be and what we're eventually gonna be able to show our our community who's ever on a community facility committee and where I'm going to be able to show board members and so thank you and kudos to Kim on that. That's huge and boy did that grow because I remember when it was first developed it was almost a placeholder to make sure we were going to be able to get it the, to take advantage of the process and yes. now it sounds like the tool itself is becoming pretty informative. Well the tool very very yeah I, just to give you an example and we've never really had this before maybe we should have but it's forced us to have it so when Kim and I were meeting with Jim Huberti and with uh, Paul I can't remember Paul's last name um, it's hard to say yeah so Solsky or something <laughs> yeah. um, we were able to so we were saying okay we're going to do seal coating on some parking lots well when you think about the Pinecrest is it north south west east well Kim was able to pull up the pictures and we were able to have the discussion with photos with what the projected cost would be it was just very much more informative um, this time around it's going to be a good thing for our school district and eventually our community because we can have that discussion live on video with our community as well thank you and now the 2015-16 and 16-17 transportation contract and we haven't had a lot of time to uh, talk with board members about this. We've been um, discussing this. I've been discussing it with uh, our representative who negotiates the contract on our behalf because they know more about transportation, what's going around in the metro area. But uh, for the, list, uh, the people listening, we do get great service from Hastings Bus Company. There's, there's no doubt about it. Um, I'm in my 14th year now, and, and the service is outstanding what we get from them and uh, I've been able to review uh, some very competitive cost comparisons to surrounding school districts and uh, what we put together for the two-year contract which is this year and next year um, Hastings has given us a very competitive um, uh, projections of what their costs would be and that we're going to enter into an agreement with and that's with a three percent increase for this year a two percent increase for next year um, there's also a mileage clause in there which we've never had before which as the fuel goes up or down um, if it goes down then they owe us some money if it goes up above a certain point we owe them some money 
um, and then some routing that they've been doing as well. So uh, it's it's a it's a good solid quote bid contract, and uh, I'm recommending it. And I'm also thanking Hastings Bus Company for giving us some very competitive bids compared to surrounding school districts as well. I shouldn't say bid. They're, we're seeing what other people are getting, and they're saying we'll be below that in our contract. So we didn't take it out to bid. We didn't RFP it. But they're saying, you know, we're going to do this for the Hastings School District, and I'm very happy with what's been proposed. So I'm asking for your approval. Anybody want to make the motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve the contract. I'll second. Any discussion? I have a question. I was just looking at it. It talks about having five cameras on each bus. Mm -hmm. And I, I'd hate to ask a dumb question, but have we had those for a long time? Um, we've had probably about two or three years. We haven't had five. We've had cameras within the bus company oh. that we pay for. Now, what's it say there? <laughs> it says... A minimum of five cameras cameras will be available for oh. use on oh on on oh, so that's five yes. cameras. I was like, Whoa. So that's if that's so it's if a problem gets reported, yep. then a camera might be used. Yes. Okay. And we did talk about um, yes, yeah, so we've got exactly right. We've got five cameras, which we if there's parents or, or students saying, Hey, we have some concerns, we can put that camera on the bus. We're probably going to look to add cameras. Um, not that we want to catch students doing anything bad, but it's just another level of safety. Uh, and a lot of school districts are doing that. Cool. Or at least we can put the fake cameras in all of us. <laughs> <laughs> Quiet. Quiet. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Next up, uh, seniority list. We put out our seniority list to our staff. We asked them to look at it. We asked them to review it um, to make sure that if we do get into a budget reduction and somebody has to bump into somebody else, that they're in agreement that that's where their seniority is. And so we've gone through that process. Again, staff have looked at it, so we're bringing it forward to you as the board then to approve. Come on, motion. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. And the calendar for the 17-18 school year. Yes, uh, we've gone to going to a, a two-year. This isn't even for next year, of course, it's for the following year. Uh, and I think in our discussion um, with the chair of the calendar committee, uh, it was mentioned about you know early outs can be <laughs> uh, early outs can be a concern specifically for uh, parents of younger children trying to find. A daycare for them at times, etc., um, and then also whether it's a good use of a school day, um, is because of you might only be in class for 24 minutes, and then 24 minutes, whatever that might be, um, and that was noted um, in our discussion, uh, and so we've tried to limit and have as few as early outs um, as possible. We've we've gone back and forth on the number of early outs as a district. So, um, anyways, a board, you've had a chance to. Review it. You've had a chance to ask the, the chair some questions about it, and I'm recommending approval for 2017-2018. Anybody want to make the motion? I'll make the motion. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. And the 16-17 non-contract rates of pay. Part of this is uh, continue to improve our documentation of, uh, of an individual or a posi position that's not in a, a bargaining contract. What are, what are our rates for uh, pay for them? And, and Kim has gone through this and I've reviewed it with her um, and we're bringing it forward for approval. Anybody want to make the motion on that? I'll motion. I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. And two uh, changes in assignment. And not necessarily new positions. Kathy's replacing a PSA who, um, or excuse me, an individual, an instructional assistant who became a PSA. And then um, Tammy Steven right now is going to be lead cook at. Uh, 
JFK for the remainder of this year and um, into the upcoming following year. Anybody want to make the motion? Awesome. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes and a motion to approve four wonderful people who are retiring. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Congratulations to the retirees. Uh, motion to accept a couple of resignations. So moved. Second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. And a number of leaves. I'll move to approve the leaves. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? <clears throat> Any opposed? Motion passes and two new hires. <clears throat> All motion. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes and a reassignment. All motion. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. And um, <clears throat> we have a designated school board representative. Um, we have to confirm the name of a board representative. I just need a name. Oh. I don't, don't, it's not board action. I just need to know who you guys want to appoint. Who is that for? Minnesota <clears throat> State High School. Okay. Oh, for State, State, State High School. School. <laughs> okay. I, yeah, I forgot, I forgot to <laughs> inform board members on this one. Um, basically, the Minnesota State High School League has changed their policy, and they're including board members now on votes, which I find is interesting, and I applaud them, um, because in the past it's been their, their committee, and so uh, we need one person to serve as that representative. In the past, we've had a Minnesota State High School League board representative, but there wasn't a lot of meat and potatoes with it. Um, and so now there might be, because now they're going to be able to vote on some issues. Well, anybody volunteering? I would volunteer. Scott, very noble of you. <laughs> um, any discussion? I don't think we need to make a motion on that. You're welcome to, to join that noble cause. I'll sit next to you and pat you on the back. All right, thanks. And aside from noting the two dates listed for the work session on March 9th and the high school lunch on March 15th. Okay. Oh. Yeah, we've had some juggling. Uh, we've, had some, you know, we've been going out to sites for work sessions and there's been some trading of sites now. Uh, March 9th is gonna be um, Pinecrest. Originally it was gonna be at Tilden, but it'll be at Pinecrest Elementary. Cool. And can we have a motion to adjourn? Motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. And board members, if we could, uh, and anybody from the public who wants to join us, just continue our work session discussion about our next uh, process for budget reductions. Thanks, guys.